By and large, the key factor you need to understand with municipal bonds are that these have triple tax benefits. Tell me more. Girl, okay. <laughs> when I say triple, I mean no local taxes. Okay. No, so no local or city taxes, no state taxes, and no federal income taxes. So I don't gotta live in Puerto Rico no more. <laughs> Everybody, I'm Lynette Calfani Cox, the Money Coach. And I'm Terry Gioma, founder of Trade and Travel. The show that breaks down everything you wanted to know about investing. Yes. Today's topic is bonds. bonds. We're not like bond girls, but I don't know. We could be called bond girls. We're like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, okay, James Bond, yeah. Why not? Charlie's Angels, you know? <laughs> I'm down. I'm down with it, let's go. <laughs> but in the world of investing, bonds are fixed income securities. So I know a lot of you are saying like, what exactly is a bond and how does it work? So let us break it down for you. And they've been in the news a lot. So it's really important when we think about like the 10 year and all these interest rates things on CNBC, the word bond comes up. I have no idea what they're talking about. So I'm <laughs> going to let it let Lynette lead this time. And I'm just going to ask questions because I'm like, I, I don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so first off, let's define what a bond is and maybe let's help explain it by contrasting it to what a stock is. So you know that if you buy a stock, you're getting equity participation or ownership in terms of shares in a company that you might buy, right? So you might be, I don't know, buying Nike shoes or some clothes. That's all fine and good if you want to look good, I guess, but go buy yourself some Nike shares, okay? If you want to have equity ownership mm -hmm. in a given business. Okay, so as a stockholder, you have certain rights. You can vote, for example, yeah. on things that affect the company. This is one of the privileges of being a stockholder. You can potentially get paid a dividend. You might get dividend income from your stock holdings. Yeah. Well, a bond works totally different. A bond simply is a loan that you make to a company or an organization in order to achieve a certain amount of interest and get your principal amount back at the end of the bond's term. So with a bond, you are not getting ownership in that institution. So you can buy bonds, for example, let's say from uh, an automotive uh, company like Ford or GM, you can buy some of their bonds. But if you buy, say, $10,000 worth of GM bonds, you are not having ownership of GM or Ford or you know any of those companies stock. You've simply given the company a loan. Is this like when you buy debt of a company? You're not buying the debt necessarily. Okay. They're getting indebted to you in the mm. sense that they owe you something, right? Okay. So what happens is they will give you a stated amount of interest. And we're talking about in this instance, for corporate bonds, as an example. We're gonna talk about the different types of bonds a little bit later on. But in a nutshell, let's say you buy $10,000 worth of bonds from company ABC, and you give them the $10,000. Really, you're loaning mm -hmm. them the $10,000. In exchange, they agree to pay you a stated rate of interest. That interest might be 4%, 6%, 8%, 10%. They go up that high? It varies. Yes, okay. it does. It varies. And I'll tell you about how and under what circumstances you might get a higher paying bond. Okay. But at the end of the term, you're going to get all of your principal back. And along the way, you're going to get that interest that they've promised you. I so, like that. So let's say you buy a five-year bond and the stated interest rate is 8%. Well, if you give them or loan them $10,000, 8% of that is $800. So every year they're gonna give you for the next five years, $800 per year. So you'll get $800 in year one, $800 in year two, that's taking you up to 1,600, $800 in year three, that's taking you up to $2,400, 
$800 a year for, now you're at $3,200 and $800 in year five, that's $4,000 that they've paid out to you. So they've compensated you. They've given you a return on your money for loaning them the money. Yeah. But then guess what? At the get end, the money back. you get your principal back too. This reminds me of like a syndication. Have you ever heard of that in real estate? Well, yes. no, you have. Yes. But where you put some money in and then you get interest on it until they sell the house in the future. And, and then, then you they get return the, the principal back yeah. to the investors. Okay. It is somewhat of a okay. similar concept. So some people like the idea of bonds because they consider them to be, and they're often called, fixed income securities. This is the reason why yeah. a lot of older people, retirees, those who are on a fixed income, like the security of knowing without fail, I'm going to get paid, I'm going to get this $800 for the year. For the and, year. It, and it might yeah. be paid out in different um, intervals. Mm -hmm. It might be quarterly payouts. Some of them could be monthly, but for the most part, it's going to be quarterly or biannual or annual payouts that you're going to get your money back, right? So now you've gotten your 8% return year after year. And then at the end, you get your $10,000 in principal back. Now let's talk about why all of this matters and yeah. why it is that you would want to do this because Honestly, as an investor, you have a whole range of choices. You could put your money into a lot of different things. Somebody might be like, well, 8%, I'm trying to get more than that. Yeah. I, I'm not well, necessarily seeing that 8% is enough to attract me. I'm even surprised that it's 8% because every time I hear about bonds, I hear about like junk 4%. bonds and they're not, you're not making any money in bonds. So don't do it. Equities is better. So 8% is a lot. So now let's talk about this because the type of bonds that you buy and the credit quality of the issuer matters greatly when it comes to determining mm. the interest rate. Okay. So you've heard of ratings agencies, right? Like Moody's or Standard & Poor's. Well, Moody's and S&P rate companies' bonds. And so they're going to tell you, is this AAA rated? Meaning is this top of the line in terms of credit quality? Like you can rest assured and know that you're gonna get your principal back. They're gonna pay you the stated rate of interest that they've promised. And that, yeah, at the end of the term, it's extremely likely that you're going to get your money back. It's kind of like the equivalent of saying in layman's terms, like if somebody has like a 850 FICO score, mm -hmm. you know, and a lender is going to look at you and say, oh, I will, I will give them a credit card or I'll give them a mortgage or a loan because they have excellent credit. Chances are, if I give them a loan, they're going to pay me back. And those loans are able to change or those ratings are able to change, right? I think I've Absolutely. heard some people whose ratings been Absolute. dropped. Absolutely. Okay. So at any given point in time, an organization's ratings can change. And mm -hmm. I say an organization because it could be a company, it could be a city, it could be a municipality. A city could, can give a bond? Absolutely. Oh, that's great. So there are things called municipal bonds, for example. That makes sense. Yeah, I've heard of that. So <laughs> I wanted to make sure, even though I've been talking about corporate bonds, I wanted to make sure that you understood that there's various types of bonds. In addition to corporate bonds, there are indeed municipal bonds. There are also government bonds. So let's talk a little bit about some of these too, because yeah. I think this is really important. It is, and the but, government bonds are probably what I've been hearing more about because mm -hmm. they're the ones that people are saying, well, I don't know how safe it'll be. Well, and we can't say safety, we don't know, but that's probably what I've heard more about, the right. government bonds, right. okay? So, okay, so let's talk about some of these. So first, before we put a bow around corporate bonds and talking about why that all matters, in the corporate bond spectrum, you need to understand that there are a variety of ratings that those bonds can be assigned. They might be AAA, as I mentioned. It might be AA, it might be A minus, it might be B, B plus, mm -hmm. down to C, and junk level, you know. Like, That's what I always hear about, so clearly. So no, just... <laughs> the junk <laughs> bonds that you might have heard about are those that are the most risky. And mm -hmm. those are the ones with the highest yields. Oh, so, well, they got to compensate you for that risk because you might be like, I might not get paid back. You know, again, okay. think about it in credit terms. If you were a person who had a, a 580, you know, FICO score, 
You said and you went a out lot to risk get, to you, bet on yeah, you. Yeah, you went out to get a car <laughs> loan. You're not going to get that 0% deal. You're not going to get that 2% loan, right? They're going to charge you like 10, 11% for that car loan, if not more, you mm -hmm. know? So they're looking at your credit history and your credit quality, the likelihood of repayment, and they're determining the whether or not, on that. yes, okay. what should be the interest rate that we need to pay to investors to compensate them, to entice them to buy these bonds. So the lower credit quality bonds in the corporate world, certainly, um, are those that pay the highest yields, but you have mm -hmm. to understand that they're riskier and you might not get, get paid, your your back? get your principal back. Yes. Oh, wow. They could default on their obligations. No. So now, now you're like, oh, okay, no. No, nah, so it is what I like boss. Okay, no, so, so you have to say, which area do I want to play in? Am I going to go down the credit spectrum? Okay, maybe maybe you feel comfortable with like B rated, you know, something in the B category, but mm -hmm. not something down in the C and the C minus and okay. getting into, into junk territory. But again, but then everybody you're, then has- your interest rate won't be as high. Exactly. So your risk versus your- return. Exactly. And everybody okay. has a different risk tolerance, right? Everybody has a different outlook and a different yeah. um, way of investing and a different comfort level. So just understand the lower the quality of the bond, the higher the interest rate is going to be, but the more the risk you're going to bear as well. Okay. So now let's talk about municipal bonds and we'll talk about government bonds. And then we're going to, you know, no, get into two our two cents yeah. as well. So first on the municipal bond front, by and large, the key factor you need to understand with municipal bonds are that these have triple tax benefits. Tell me more. Girl, okay. when I say triple, <laughs> I mean no local taxes. Okay. No, so no local or city taxes, no state taxes, and no federal income taxes. So I don't gotta live in Puerto Rico no more? <laughs> so I can just, I can just your invest in bonds. You can just be, make your whole part. I'm not suggesting that oh, because we want to have fun. diversification. <laughs> However, bonds are and municipal bonds are a very nice thing to add to the mix for tax efficiency. Absolutely. Oh, so good. I'm gonna keep up with my account too. Please you know, do. Some, this some is some people good. To talk this about is good some of this news. Stuff. Because absolutely, this is one of the reason, especially folks who are on a fixed income or folks who are Retirement. high net worth. Mm. They are looking for tax advantage ways to put their money to use. And municipal bonds are one of those things. Now, let me tell you guys, you know, cities, counties, states issue bonds as well. So a long time ago, Orange mm. County, which is where I happen to have gone to undergrad, where I went to UC Irvine um, in you Irvine, California. It. Yes. <laughs> Orange County issued bonds and defaulted on their bonds a long time ago. Okay? Let me take back They're, my sprinkles. Uh, okay, <laughs> Orange County, come on now. <laughs> they got past it. I'm not. I'm not bashing. You know, Orange County anymore. But I'm telling you that <laughs> you must have had a sometimes. Bond back in the day. <laughs> just like, think no. about. Just think about the ways in which cities, municipalities, or counties sometimes get into trouble. They need to raise taxes. They need to raise revenues. Why are they trying to issue bonds in the first place? They're building schools, they're building roads, roads bridges, yeah. doing infrastructure projects. Mm -hmm. They're doing things that Healthcare. need a healthy, you know, a, a large amounts of capital. So yes, municipalities, cities, states, et cetera, they also issue bonds Damn. and those get rated as well. So, yeah. you know, I have a question, but we can okay. save it for my two cents. But I wonder if, okay. if cities are going to start defaulting after 2020, you know, because COVID, a lot of cities went into debt and didn't have the money. Oh, man, that sounds scary. Let's hope not. Let's okay. hope that. Let's put our, where's our glass? Let's hope, let's right. keep that glass half full. <laughs> How about knock on um, wood? There yes, we go. Yes, there we go. We got the wood to knock on yeah. that. Um, but yes, there is always an ever-present risk of default mm -hmm. for any issuer of bonds if there is not, you know, either uh, strong financial backing for that issuer yeah. or if there's not an underlying asset that's involved because then there's a whole bunch of other types of securities that can be issued. There's things like 
asset backed securities. That's yeah. a whole other level. And we're not going to go at take least it there's on some protection that. there, though. Correct. With those asset backed securities. OK, that makes sense. Right. So, we, well, quick question. Do you know who they're accountable to? Like if a city defaults. Duh. I don't know. It might be someone crazy, but I just was wondering, like, who who keeps track of that? <laughs> Investor risk applies to, <laughs> to bonds all just like it applies to <laughs> stocks. When you're Dang. putting your capital at risk, there is the risk of loss and or default in this case. With anything. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's so true. to my knowledge, no, it's not like you will have some recourse. But it's not to say that if, let's say, a city went bankrupt or if a municipality was unable to pay its obligations as uh, required or as stated, you know, investors may get paid some money, but there's a hierarchy and a priority in terms of who gets paid first, first. what. Okay. So that always comes into play as well. So there you have it. Now let's talk about treasury bonds the government bonds so there's a whole host of types of bonds that you can buy from the government t bills t notes um long-term treasury bonds you know you you mentioned the 10 year yeah there's 30 year bonds um Two there's years. even something that i actually recommend for a lot of people called i bonds and I bonds right now, you'd be shocked again. I bonds are paying right now through April 2022, 7.12%. What? Mm-hmm. How long do you, you can keep the bond? Ten, you can you can buy ten thousand dollars worth, and that's a good question. And off the top of my head, I'm gonna be honest, I don't even know what the mm. um, the duration or the maturity is for those bonds. Maybe we'll look it up real yeah. quick here while we're, look, while while we're, talk, on, while yeah. we're talking. I'll, I'll you can look, look up yeah. I-bonds I just to be on the on the safe side here because I don't want to misspeak. And I'm not going to tell you guys something that I honestly do not know, okay? So, but one of the things that I wanted to bring this up for is that some people buy bonds in a technique that's called laddering. In other words, they let bonds mature over time at different intervals. So you were saying, how quickly do you have to be in and out? Mm -hmm. Because you don't want to have to buy a bond and then sell it before the bond matures or comes due. It says that you can cash the bond after 12 months. So one year. Okay, so it is. I didn't want to say it, but if if it is only for one year, 7.12%, that's really good. That's like the average of the market. 8 to 10%. Exactly. Now, how many? Now, you have to keep your money locked up. Okay, for this amount of time. Okay, you're not supposed to cash it out, or you could have to pay a penalty for doing so. So you have to do this with funds that you have available that you can set aside that you don't need to touch for the next one year or longer. So, but I love I bonds for the high rate that they're paying right now. Again, this is through the government. Okay, and oh, nobody- wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Finish your thought and then ask. Nobody has ever lost money with U.S. government bonds. You, you know, these obligations are backed by the full faith and credit of the U.S. government. So long as we don't default, as long as, you know, Republicans and Democrats can keep that, you know. Keep, I'm still not going to look because I don't that trust one. that at all. Because I know sometimes they, Man, they, they get to the point where they, they don't, they don't want to raise that debt they ceiling. They argue like, over please, all kinds of stuff. You know, we don't understand. Default. But so far, Up we've never now. in the history <laughs> of the United States, we've never defaulted on our debts once. And that is important. That is hopefully something that's going to keep going for, you know, the next hundred plus years. But okay. go ahead. A yes. couple updates about the I-bond. So I, I said that it was for 12 months, but it says, however, if you cash the bond before it is five years old, you, you, you lose the last three months of your interest. Okay. So as long as you keep it 12 months, then you're good. But after that, you might lose the last three months if you don't keep it for five years. Okay. And again, isn't 7.12%? That's really good. That's amazing. And think about what you have in cash. Like if you have some money set aside, some of you Mm -hmm. might have CD, um, CDs right now, certificates of deposit. Mm -hmm. You might have funds sitting in a money market account. You might have a sweep account where you've taken money out of your brokerage or investment account and swept it into your checking or your savings Mm -hmm. account. 
But what are you getting in terms of your interest rate right now if you've got the money sitting in the bank? Man, you see Not she, even 1%. You see, she didn't even say savings. She said everything else because the savings is like 0.0.0. So yeah, clearly it's, it's that's paltry. not even on the table. It's, it's, it's paltry amounts <laughs> of money that you're getting. Mm -mm. So that's why, again, looking at some fixed income securities, whether they be treasury bills, notes, longer term bonds or I bonds, things of that mm -hmm. nature, this is a good option for folks who are looking at rounding out their portfolio, having, yeah, having more diversification, having in. consistent, yes, yeah. consistent income. And so, you know, my two cents is that I'm, I'm kind of loving it. I, I like the idea of having bonds, even though I'm a, actually quite an aggressive investor. I tend mm -hmm. to be, you know, a lot more risk um, tolerant and to kind of go for it, you know, I'm, I'm fairly younger and I have more of a, t a longer time horizon. I expect to be investing for, you know, decades even more to come. Yeah. But I understand that there's a need to have good asset allocation. And if you haven't seen our video on we'll asset allocation, out. we tech definitely tech, uh, recommend that you check that one out as well. Yeah. So, um, I think, yes. I think my two cents on it is you've won me over to the bond side. Okay, great. Yeah. Oh, I like when I, I can do something good. Yes. yes. I love the taxes part of it. Yeah, like that absolutely. was something I did not know that it Municipal. was a triple threat instead yep. in terms of taxes. Absolutely. I love that. Um, I also love this this seven percent interest rate. I do. I did Get it notice before the end of April, twenty twenty two. Right. The rate changes. Yes. Okay. I and noticed so after, that it changes yeah, after, after six April. Months. Is this mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. After April of twenty twenty two, it'll change again. I don't. We don't know what the rate will be, but I'm just telling you that right now, it's seven point one two percent, and that's a really good rate. That's a good rate. Yeah. Like even one of the things that I do for just letting money kind of sit and getting a mm -hmm. return is stable coins. Mm -hmm. But that, that interest rate is around 6% that I have. So 7% is a it really good. It even beats good, that. Yeah. yeah. So that's really good. Huh? I, I think she won me over to the bond side. So how do they get started <laughs> if they're interested in bonds? So um, you can go online. So there's the Treasury Department is where you would buy your I bonds or looking at government securities. You can also buy government securities through brokerage firms, et cetera. But really, you just literally go to treasurydirect.gov and then you'll see a whole host of information there. Again, it's treasurydirect.gov to be able to purchase those um, fixed income securities directly. This is one place where rising interest rates is helpful. It actually, good point to note here yeah. because remember, Interest rates kind of cut both ways, right? Depending on whether you're a saver or you're an investor, right? If you're, or, or frankly, a borrower, okay? Yeah. So we know that right now we're in an environment where the Fed is talking about raising interest rates. And the consensus on Wall Street is that rates are going to be raised not two, not three, but maybe four or five or more times yeah. in 2022. And they've already said that, that they're going to raise rates. Mm -hmm. So now let's say you're a borrower, Let's say a borrower with credit card debt, for example. That's credit card, mortgages, any kind Student of borrowing. Student loans, auto loans, yep. anything that has a variable rate attached to it. Those interest rates are subject to be increased in the months and potentially years ahead because of actions by the Fed to raise rates. Yep. So what that means is you definitely want to be looking at getting rid of some of that variable rate debt. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be on that side of the equation where you're paying higher interest rates because rates have moved higher. Mm -hmm. But if you're a saver or an investor, you get the benefit of that. Again, I always yeah. tell people interest rates, you know, it they works both, both ways. ways. Yeah, they do. If you're a saver or an investor, you can be collecting. You know, a long time ago, I figured mm -hmm. out like which side of the equation do I want to be on? When I was in debt a long time ago, I was like, I'm paying all this interest to these credit card companies. Yeah. I don't want to keep paying this. I want to be collecting the interest. Yeah. And now that's what I'm doing, like collecting the money, you know? Yeah. So you really want to make sure that you understand how you can take advantage of these opportunities. Higher interest rates, yep. And bonds is just one way for you to do just that. So we hope you've enjoyed this particular yes. session and that you understand a lot more about bonds or so-called fixed income securities. One other thing I didn't note is that another reason that bonds are appealing to people who are on a fixed income, like retirees, et cetera, is that Social Security 
is not enough for most folks to get by on, okay? The average mm -hmm. social security check is only like twelve or $1,300. Yep. So that is one portion of people who are getting fixed income. They're relying on a stream. If you're 62 or older, you can qualify for and claim social security benefits. You should wait as long as possible. Every year that you wait, you add about 8% to your social mm. security paycheck for the rest of your life. Nice. So you should try to wait as long as possible. But some folks can't wait. So they might be looking at tapping into that social security mm -hmm. and or tapping into investments, things like their uh, stock portfolios yeah. or their bonds that they're relying upon for income to help them to make it through. So That's anyway, this good. was our explanation about bonds and I hope yeah. that you've gotten a lot out of it. Be sure to like us and to and subscribe. subscribe. And give us a chat if you learned something new. If you're like me <laughs> and you didn't know a lot about bonds before, tell us in the comments how Absolutely. this impacted you. All right, we'll talk to you later. Mwah. Thank you. Love you guys. Take care, we'll see you, see in, the you in the next one. one.